Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Monday morning to you. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. I tell you, uh, it was a very good weekend for me. Um, just really, really good. I, you know, and then I get to the office this morning, and I start listening to my voice messages, and my goodness gracious, the absolutely fantastic, the exciting things that are being reported to me uh, over the phone here in the private message. I, I was just informed of a group of four to five ministers that have come to understand covenant eschatology and accept covenant eschatology as a direct result of our YouTube videos. I'm certainly not going to name names. I'm not going to even name locations here. But the point of fact is we are just absolutely thrilled at this report. And I want to say to those who are watching, keep watching, keep studying. Wonderful, wonderful things are happening in regard to the spreading of the truth of a God who keeps his promises. This, folks, let me say this. Preaching the truth of covenant eschatology is the way we glorify our God, the, the way that we glorify our Savior, Jesus Christ. There is no glorification of Jesus Christ in any kind of a futurist eschatology that says, well, of course, Jesus said he was coming back in the first century, but of course we all know he didn't do it. There is no glory for Christ. There is no magnifying him as the Son of God in any system that says, of course, we all know the New Testament writers expected the coming of the Lord, the judgment, the resurrection in their lifetime. They taught that it was very near, but we all know it didn't happen. I'm sorry, folks. That does not glorify our God. That does not glorify Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Jesus himself said, Do not believe me for my word's sake. Believe me for my work's sake. If I do not do the works which the Father has given me to do, do not believe me. So with all due respect to all of the futurist views that are believed by some wonderful, you know, God-fearing, Christ-loving people, anytime we take a position that denies that Jesus kept his word when he said he was going to keep it, does not gender faith. And it does not glorify him. The message that we are proclaiming in these YouTube videos is the view that truly reveals who Jesus is. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Okay, just had to say that. Now, I'm sharing with you the background, the prophetic source of Paul's resurrection doctrine in 1 Corinthians 15. Paul said the resurrection, when mortal, would put on immortality. The corruptible would, be, would put on incorruptibility. Then shall be brought to pass the saying, death is swallowed up in victory. Well, that's directly from Isaiah chapter 25 and verse 8. Now, I've got to share with you this morning something that you've heard me say over and over again. But as they say, repetition is the mother of learning. What I want to press upon your mind this morning is that Isaiah chapter 25 posits the resurrection absolutely, definitively, and undeniably as the fulfillment of God's old covenant promises made to old covenant Israel after the flesh. And what that means is, if you have an eschatology that is not focused on the fulfillment of God's old covenant promises made to old covenant Israel, then your eschatology is false. In numerous formal debates, I have asked both my amillennial and my reformed uh, amillennial opponents, are your eschatological hopes based upon taken from God's old covenant promises made to Old Covenant Israel. They have almost invariably said, no. 
in two formal debates with Dr. David Hester, a millennialist from the Churches of Christ, I pointed out that Dr. Hester said his eschatological hope was not the hope of Israel. Well, guess what? Paul said his eschatological hope was from Moses, the law, and the prophets, Acts 24, 14 and following, Acts 26, 21 and following, Acts 28, 18 and following, and 1 Corinthians 15. With Dr. David Hester saying, well, no, my eschatological hope is not based upon Moses and the law and the prophets. He, he thus admitted that he preaches a different eschatology from what Paul did. Now let me drive that home. Isaiah chapter 25 and verse 8. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord will wipe away tears from all faces. The rebuke of his people he will take away from the earth. For the Lord has spoken. And it will be said in that day. What is the antecedent? The day in which he would swallow up death. In that day. It will be said, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him. He will save us. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Do you catch that? Here is Isaiah saying, that the day of the resurrection, the day of the messianic banquet, remember that? Would be the time of Israel's salvation. Look, folks, this is Romans chapter 11, where Paul said, if the casting away of Israel be the blessings of the world, then what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? And he was talking about the righteous remnant of old covenant Israel, of which Paul said he was, as a member of the tribe of Benjamin, he was a member of that righteous remnant of old covenant Israel. But he said that the Lord was going to consummate, perfect, bring to its end that work of Israel's covenant history at the coming of the Lord out of Zion in fulfillment of Isaiah, in fulfillment of Hosea, in fulfillment of Jeremiah, in fulfillment of Daniel 9. You see, folks, before the nations could enjoy the blessing of salvation, Israel had to be saved. Resurrection had to come through Israel. In that day, it will be said, this is our God. We have waited on Him. Just as Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. To the Jew first, then to the Greek. Just as Jesus said, salvation is of the Jews. We must understand that the story of redemption, the story of Adam, and the death curse that entered through Adam was assimilated into the, the resurrection promise and became the resurrection promise of Abraham. The resurrection promise of Abraham was assimilated into and became the resurrection hope of Israel. And the New Testament teaching as well as the Old Testament teaching is that when God kept those promises that He posited within Israel's covenant promises by means of the feast days, by means of the Sabbath, by means of the overt promises and prophecies just like Isaiah 25, when Israel's Old Covenant history came to an end, the Adamic resurrection promise would be fulfilled. That would mean the Abrahamic resurrection promise would be fulfilled. That would be in the day of Israel's salvation. You do not have, you cannot have an eschatology. You cannot have a doctrine of resurrection that is divorced from God's old covenant promises made to old covenant Israel. And thus... When the amillennialist says God was through with Israel at the cross, Paul said they're wrong. 
When the dominionist says God was through with Israel at the cross, Paul says they were wrong. And when the premillennialist, although he admits that God was going to deal with Israel in the last days and bring about the kingdom promises, when they deny that that was taking place in the first century and that that end, that consummation was near in the first century, Paul says they were wrong. Folks, when Paul said that the resurrection would be in fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 25, we must, we absolutely must submit to his word that his doctrine of the resurrection is the doctrine and it is the elucidation of God's old covenant promises made to old covenant Israel to be fulfilled in and through and by Jesus Christ at the end of the old covenant age. This is a foundational doctrine. This is foundational to Paul's resurrection doctrine. If you want more on this, be sure to get my book, The Resurrection of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 2, Fulfilled or Future. I develop this extensively and irrefutably in this book. Go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com, order the book. Be sure to send me a note saying that you saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook, and I'll refund your shipping, saving you $5. Look, we've got a whole lot more from right here, right here in Isaiah, the context of Paul's doctrine of the resurrection, the hope of Israel, and we will see you on the flip side.